welcome back to part 2 of the joystick. It took me forever to make this part because I went through so many adventures with this project. Uh, if you haven't watched part 1, there is a link on the screen and in the description. At first, I tried to work it out using a 555 I see in a monostable configuration and to read the result using the pulse in command. My first big test was to find the right circuit. I had one major hardware limitation and that is the 100k VCC connected potentiometer. The second most important limitation I had was that I wanted the total of both the high and the low period to be as short as possible yet leaving me with enough scale on the high part. After searching and a few trials and errors I ended up with this circuit. Down there between the wires there is a 555 IC. One of, the one of the oldest and the most used I see till today. The setup is a monostable and the output is read by the Arduino using the pulse in command. What you're seeing on the screen in the serial monitor is the pulse in result for both the high and the low square wave, length of time and microseconds. The potentiometer, valued at 100k, will control the length of the high period. As you can see, when I'm moving it, it changes the value on the high running from around 6 to about 50 which gives me more than enough space to get values on the joystick more than enough scale after all that was said and done I connected joystick into it and still was getting an unstable read especially from this one so after a conversation with Offer, which pointed out that I'm just moving the voltage divider from an analog read to a 555 system, and he was right, I decided to go back to analog and give it a try. At first I put 100k potentiometers, because this is about the value of the potentiometers inside the joystick. And I was still getting somewhat an unstable read again from this one. And my guess is, is because this goes all the way to actual zero, which those doesn't because of the movement inside. So I added another 100k. So now the dividing is between 100k and the other side is 100k plus the value from here. Now using the formula for voltage divider I was able to get some more values and I'm going to move the camera to the top and show you those values. As you can see when I move this roller or the joystick you can see the X and Y moving. Another cool thing, I can run the triggers and this one as well. So now I take those numbers and make it more usable so we can have either 0 to 100 or something like that. Let's go to the computer. After doing a lot of measurements, this is about the numbers that I got for the max x, uh, the max y and the uh, max second y which is the scroller same goes for the minimum so those are about the numbers that i got also you can see the patterns that each press of a number each press of a button on the joystick creates on the four inputs of the buttons which i covered in the previous video now let's go to the code itself what i basically did hold on what i basically did the most important thing was to read sorry to constrain what I'm getting from the analog read and as I mentioned before I'm using the voltage divider calculation and I'm not going to go in depth into it but this is about what happens uh, to get that value and when I get those values I constrain them and the reason for the constraint is that sometimes you'll get a little bit over it a little bit under it but those are really like um, and uh, case that don't happen all the time and if you try to balance by them the joystick will never center well so i kind of like constrain them and then what i do is just map them between zero and a hundred between the minimum and the maximum for that value and just outputting that on the screen so now let's upload this code i'm going to show you how it works and now as you can see it's showing 50 and 50, I hope it's going to be good in the video. And then taking it forward we get 0, taking it backward to 100, 100 here, 0 here, and the scroller goes from 0 to 100. And of course I still get all the buttons. 
So this is how far I'm going to take it in this video. I got some crazy ideas of what to actually do now that I know the position and all the buttons. I originally thought of moving something physically, but I'm starting to think of maybe ESP, something some maybe like a JavaScript game, HTML. I got some crazy ideas. If you got any ideas, please leave a comment, give a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and see you next time.